In this episode, I really wanted to test out the long reach capabilities of Canon's new radio based wireless communications. I love to go on safari and love to use the long lenses for portraiture as well as wildlife. A Canon Super Telephoto and a radio based speed light? Now that sounds like a great way to spend a day. I had already lined up lovely model Natasha and Ralph the Land Rover, so I went looking for a bush plane and found a beautiful Piper Clipper, circa 1947. A bit of charm, along with some certificates of insurance, and the next thing you know, we're working on the apron of a small regional airport. With a 400mm f2.8 IS Super Telephoto and careful composition, I was able to frame a shot that could have been captured anywhere in East Africa. For my key light, I set up three 600EX RTs on a single stand. This combination would allow me to have enough output to overpower daylight while still affording reasonably quick recycling times. You have to be careful when using multiple undiffused speed lights or you can get into some trouble with multiple shadows, but this setup worked out great. Now here's a look at the layout. Working in group mode, my master was an ST-E3RT transmitter. The Safari Girl was illuminated by the A group, which consisted of three Speedlight 600EXRTs set to ETTL mode and high speed sync. Even though I had established my B and C groups, I didn't use them for my very first setup. A shot I cleverly call High Noon over the Serengeti. I wanted to try overpowering the daylight with a slightly warmed A group only. I played with straight, unfiltered speed light and then tried a bit of half CTS gel. It looked good, but this was an effect I decided to save for later in the evening. To enjoy daylight flash with shallow depth of field, I established a high shutter speed for a more open stop and then let the ETTL and high speed sync do the rest. The Canon Speedlight technology made the process effortless. Once I had several nice and simple synchro sun shots in the can, I rigged and placed my single light B and C groups. To make sure I had good flash coverage on the Land Rover and the Clipper, I set the reflectors on both my C and B groups to their widest settings. I placed these units to mimic the angle of the setting sun. Once the sun had dipped below the horizon, I planned to use them to mimic the pearlescent tones of an African sunrise. Next up was a shot I call Under African Skies. I wanted to explore using the tilt shift lens, and this meant working in much closer. The A group was once again based upon three speed lights working in ETTL mode with high speed sync. My B and C groups were also set to ETTL mode and high speed sync. This setup was 100% ETTL. Natasha posed with her back to the sun and helped a little bit more by shading her face with her hat. I liked it. This deep sun shadow would allow my speed light to provide 100% of the illumination on her face. I'm a stickler for light placement, so I spent quite a bit of time adjusting the location of my three A-group speed lights. No gels at this point, so I'm working in a daylight color balance arena. Ah, uh, those tilt shifts are trickier than they seem. I slammed the swing adjustment all the way to one side and tried to keep the manual focus on her face only. It's a fun technique to try, but don't be caught out when you lose a few frames to the extra shallow depth of field. I like the look of a speed light overpowering daylight. It just has so much drama. Add in the tilt shift lens and things get quite interesting. To recap, I'm in group mode and I have my various speed lights set to a mix of ETTL and manual modes. For the final setup of the day, I decided to create a look I call Sunrise Over the Serengeti. This look required constant shutter speed adjustments to chase the waning light as the sun dipped well below the horizon, but the resulting pictures were quite pleasing. To end the day, I couldn't resist jumping back to my ever-ready 400mm Super Telephoto. By carefully controlling the ambient light exposure and using the CTS half-straw filters to mimic a rising sun, we got some really beautiful shots, 
just as darkness was descending. 